So quick question for everyone. Who here has heard AI is going to change everything in the last week? Raise of hands. Now keep your hand up if you've also heard uh, a detailed explanation of how AI thinks differently than humans. We're surrounded by excitement about AI's potential, but we rarely dive into the nitty gritty of how it actually works and when it doesn't work. In this presentation, you'll learn how to identify where AI truly excels, learn to recognize its hidden pitfalls, and make informed decisions about AI in your use case. Um, so we'll start with playing a little game. Um, so what is this? Right, and shout out the answer when you have it. Yeah. Kim Kardashian, a person, right? And the AI can do this too. It recognizes this as a person with 88% confidence. Now, what is this? A cat, right? And this? What about this one? Yeah, upside down Kim Kardashian. So you say upside down Kim Kardashian, but the AI says it's actually coal, black coal. In fact, with nearly 80% confidence. Why were you able to get it right, but the AI didn't? Humans, it turns out, have a much richer representation of objects than the AI has. We have these invariabilities. For instance, position invariability. An object can be at a different position in the image and we still recognize the object. We have pose invariability. It can be at a different pose or angle and we still recognize it. That AI we just saw didn't have pose invariability because when we flipped the image upside down, it was no longer recognized by the AI. So AI does not understand as deeply as we do. It's not building those, these robust models of images that we have. It's easy for us humans to imagine a golfer swinging from the tee box without a golf club, but not for the AI. If you ask ChatGPT to create an image for this prompt, you get this extra floating golf club. And the problem is that AI learns off of correlations. So golfers and golf clubs are highly correlated. They often show up together in the tee box. And so the AI is picking up on this correlation and it's getting this wrong answer. Here's another one. I say, Dr. Mary stands to solve world hunger by giving her best friend Jane a call. Jane is certain she can solve world hunger if she gets the call. However, Mary and Jane bickered as children about butterflies. Mary will blank give Jane the call. So what do you think? Is world hunger something the AI should help us solve, right? The AI says no, not give her the call. Sorry, we bickered as children about butterflies. No solving world hunger today. <laughs> Again, it's that problem of correlation. So the AI is picking up on this common pattern in how we use language. We'll often give a proposition, then say however, and give some argument for that, and then disagree with the original proposition. And so the AI is picking up on that pattern, and on that basis, it's deciding to give the answer of not. And in fact, the AI will answer in the same kind of way, almost regardless of the content. So I say helping others is good. However, spaghetti is not very tasty, therefore you should blank help others. And again, the AI says you should not help others. So again, the AI is picking up on these correlations and they are sometimes wrong and it leads the AI to reason in a very different way than we do. So I want you to take to heart that AI thinks differently than humans. You should not expect the strengths and weaknesses to be similar for humans as it is for AI. Now, that cat you all recognized earlier, the AI thought it was guacamole. <laughs> and I'm fairly confident in saying that there was no one here that thought that image of a cat was guacamole. I'm 100% sure that there was no one who thought there was 19 different ways that that image looked just like guacamole. But the AI did. And in fact, Dan and his team at Stanford showed, showed that there are on average 19 different ways to change the image in a way that's imperceptible to humans, but that causes the AI to get it wrong. And you should care about this because that stop sign, the AI thought it was a 45 mile per hour sign. Now imagine you're pulling up to an intersection and you see another car and you expect it to stop at the stop sign so you accelerate forward. But instead of slowing down, it speeds up. There have been real lives lost due to misclassifications from the AI. And these are often mistakes that no human would make. There's Tesla's self-driving car thinking that the moon was a yellow light or people putting traffic cones on their cars to confuse Waymo vehicles. 
So given the bizarre nature of AI, how do we decide when are the good use cases and when are the bad use cases? So in our book, The AI Conundrum, we developed this risk framework, and it has these three axes which correspond to three basic questions you should ask when applying AI. So how much precision do you need in your use case? How strongly do you need rationale? So how much do you need to understand what the AI is doing? And how much do you control the input? So are you in an open or closed environment? So let's look at that precision component first. So precision is about how precise or accurate you need the AI to be to get a good response. So math and science are in that high precision category. If I ask you to multiply two numbers, there's exactly one correct answer and everything else is wrong. So you need absolute precision for math and science. In fact, ChatGPT struggles with even basic math. So here I ask it to multiply two numbers and the result is not the correct answer. So as you increase the amount of precision that the AI needs, the AI performs worse. On the other hand, it's great at tasks that require lower precision. So creative writing and image generation are two great use cases that require less precision. Here's an image of a dog with a plate of pizza. Um, so there's lots of different ways you can create an image from that prompt dog with a plate of pizza. If you're in this room earlier, you saw um, someone give a demo of the, almost this exact principle. Um, they asked people to imagine what a dog would look like, and they saw that there's lots of different ways people imagined it. So there's more leeway in the output you get. There's a lot less precision required. And actually, you can see just how much precision matters in your use case by picking that same category of image generation and picking a subcategory sub that requires more precision. So let's say we're trying to generate the text in image. So there's lots of leeway in how you might imagine a dog, but there's a little bit less leeway in how you imagine different letters in the alphabet. So it requires more precision to create text than it does to create um, an image of a dog, for instance. And actually, if you've used uh, AI for image generation, you know that it struggled with generating text for a while. Maybe you see up there in the corner, it doesn't exactly get the word the right, and it's pretty easy for us to see when it makes that misspelling. Let's also talk about Zillow. Zillow lost $4 billion when they switched from being a media company to being a company that was using their AI to buy and flip homes. So the Z estimate estimates the price of homes, and they wanted to use this to try and flip homes. Uh, and we compute that they had an accuracy of about plus minus 7%, which is great for algorithms in this area. But you needed plus minus 2% to make this business model work. And they're operating in the most difficult octant of the risk framework. So it requires high precision. They need that plus minus 2% accuracy to make it work. They also have low input control. Zillow doesn't get to choose who buys and sells homes. Uh, if Zillow gives me an offer that undervalues my home, I'm just not gonna accept the offer. But if they are willing to overpay, then I'll gladly accept. So that's that problem of adverse selection. They're operating in an open environment, and so they had to deal with adverse selection. And lastly, there's a high need for rationale. There's a lot of ways that Zillow could have caught on to what was happening if they understood why the AI was making its decision. But it's hard to understand why AI does what it does. So they needed rationale, but they didn't have it, and so they weren't able to catch this earlier. Now, we see marketing as uh, in that ideal category of the risk framework. And so we've been doing some work in advertising and marketing. I'll pass on to Rex to talk about the exciting things we're doing in that category.